Hello and welcome to my first ever audio review. I mean, I've been on YouTube for like 20 years, so I thought I might as well do one. And an opportunity came along, which I couldn't pass up. I was actually lent two very, very good mid-range pieces of audio file equipment. So that instantly gets me buzzing anyway. So when they did come through, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'll get through this quickly. And um, anyway, see the shadow cloth? One of them's under here, which I'll cover today. And it is... See that? It's a lovely box, isn't it? In case you don't know, it's the soft ears RS5s, which are, to the normie, I'd say they're bloody expensive. But to an audiophile like me, this is mid-range stuff. Things like this can go up to about two grand. And um, I'm just really pleased that they um, have let me take the opportunity to test these out. But let's get going with the old Chi-Fi revolution. Step on the Chi-Fi train. Look at that box. I mean, it probably came in another outer box too. But it just looks like leather, stitched. And then you open it up. Maybe that's my fault they're a bit messy, but you know what IEMs are like. Uh, they go all over the place. But anyway, you get the RS5s, which I'll talk about in a second. Sorry, my finger's a bit damaged. I had a fight with an iPod earlier, as I restore iPods. So it um, pinched me a bit. Anyway, in the box, or the inner box, you get Lovely little cleaning cloth. You can keep them clean, don't you, for that money? But the um, best thing is these. Put the case out of the way for a while. I want to talk about not only the, the craftsmanship, but the quality, the, the fit, the sound, everything. And... I did write down my first impressions of these as soon as I opened the box from a, a company called Otic. If you're unaware, Otic is a, it's something in the ear, so they've really picked their name well. So if you want to know any information about these, I'd go on their website or Softears website. They are Softears like mid-range uh, pair. They do do a pair for like £2,000 which is a hell of a lot but anyway let's have a look first off we have this lovely cable beats anything you see on that amazon priced at 19.99 doesn't it this i can tell you this is silky smooth it's not going to get caught on anything and it's got a nice fat you know what on the end gold plated it just look it does look good in anything that it's sticking into Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, the lead, the lead is amazing. You pay like a good £200 for this lead, I'd say, on its own. And it comes with the actual headphones or IEMs. If you don't know what IEMs is, it's um, in-ear monitors, which are used a lot by pro musicians. When they're like doing a gig or stuff, you might see these hanging out their ear. Yeah, I just want to talk about the body of these, like the acrylic body of these really quickly, because I think they're made that no seam at all. You know, on the KS, most of you know the um, KZ1 Pros, whatever they're called. Um, they've got a big bolted metal bit on the front, and they're just not very pretty, and um, they, they sound all right, but compared to these, it's... <laughs> It's a different world, but be warned if you have small ears because the body of them is fat and the stems are long. And I found getting the left side in was fine, but when I actually tried to get the right side in at first, it was, it was not going in. So I was having to twist it about here and there and here and there. After about two or three minutes, I managed to get a good um, lock best thing to do is lock and twist then you get like a 
nice cancellation effect. But again, let's look at the little gold bits in there. Classy, absolutely classy. Yeah, another thing is they've got the two prongs, which are normally in all IEMs now. It's very rare you find one with just a, a solid bit. I suppose it keeps it all uniform so you can sort them over. Because at this price, if you damage the cable, you don't want to be buying a whole new pair, do you? Anyway, let's stick that back in there. Right, breaking it. It is actually easy to do, but not when you're looking at a camera. Yeah, anyway, there you go, they're in. I really like the tips on these as well. They're really, really thin. And they, they feel like grippy. So no, these aren't going to fall out your ear. Definitely not. They are definitely not going to fall out your ear. Unlike this thing that is. And that's better. Yeah, they're definitely not going to fall out your ear. There's grip everywhere, big chunky heads. They just, and I still can't get over the beauty of them. No massive logos. You've got the RS5 on there. And then you've got the soft ears on there. What more can you ask for, eh? But yeah, that, that's like the main body and my first impressions of them were actually wow these are completely different to what i'm used to and um once i turn them on well you'll hear in a minute i mean it is something else but you get what you pay for and i'll just leave those there for you to have a look at and don't forget links will be in the description and any other information you need hit the links you can find all the information there it'll probably be the um soft air account or the otic account um but they'll see you right you'll know everything then because it's so hard to read out every single feature they have because they have so many and some of you might not understand some of them because they're a bit what the hell's that anyway they're very comfortable um even behind the ear you know you normally get that horrible plastic with cheap ones that's not there so you don't really need that so it's like silk behind your ear it's lovely and um after i'd um played about with them for a bit without actually listening to them and just looking at the like features and things like that i um i went on to google and i typed in best songs to test headphones out with because I thought that was the only fair way of giving these a proper shot. Because I could pick like some random songs which all sound the same and you'll never know because it could be missing highs, lows, it could be even that V sound that we don't like. Well, I don't like it anyway. Um, but yeah, so the next thing was actually putting them in, turning them on, and for this, I was using a, I, I think you pronounce it, Ibasso DX750 DAP or Digital Audio Player. Um, the stats for that will be up on the, the page somewhere as well, um, because that has so many as well, like the other one. Um, and you'll probably understand it a lot more too. But plugging them in and... I linked it up to my um, Tidal account, so you also get top quality flex, top quality MQA unfolding. I mean, it even says in the manual that for MQAs that they are, well, they've been tested with the artists and the artists have come back and said, yeah, that's exactly how I want it to sound. So some people diss M MQAs, but it's just what equipment you have and if you've got a terrible pair of like headphones or a terrible phone or something like that or you haven't got, even got a DAC then you're just going to get a, a worse experience really but anyway I plugged it into the um, sorry it's the Ibasso 700 DAP um, and the specs be online for that 
Um, I'll talk more about that later because that is the actual second thing that I'm doing. And and that's that, that for, for just music, that is a game changer, but we'll go into that later. And anyway, when I went on Google, I searched for best headphone songs, like to test headphones. And obviously there was an article under What Hi-Fi and they had made playlists and said what each song actually brings out and it was things like the dynamic range, the highs, the mids, the lows, it's everything like about each song because you know some songs have got just bass, drum and bass, or some songs have got loads of highs like I don't know Ed Sheer or something like that. I'm not a fan of his, but there you go. Um, I'll try and stay impartial there. But um, the first song I tested that it suggested was um, a Tame Impaler song, which I actually quite like. Um, it was called um, Feels Like We Only Go Backwards. Amazing song. And it highlights pretty much every aspect of a song, like highs, mid, lows, dynamic range, quality. And obviously I'm getting the best quality from a DAC with, well, a, with two DACs built inside. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, two DACs built inside. And then these amazing headphones, or IEMs. And um, so from source to output, everything was a match made in heaven. I mean, it feels like I was only going backwards. Um, I think that was a um, MQA file or just a high quality file, but it sounded like it was a flak or an MQA file unfolded 16 times. It was just, it was mad. I was thinking, what the hell can this thing do? And this DAP, if it's playing music like that, at that quality, still quite good quality, but playing music like that, at that quality, what's it going to be like when there's a, a top flak on there or a massive MQA file? And uh, like I said, um, those songs weren't picked by me. They were picked by What Hi-Fi, which is a reputable company and has been around for years. So I'm going to trust them on that one, that it brings out all those aspects of the song. Anyway, the next song I listened to was, I was surprised it was on there because it's quite a simple song. And it was Seven Nation Army by The White Stripes. Everyone knows that, surely. If you're a UK football fan, you're going to know that. Um, it's, it's turned into some like sporting song, but anyway, that, that was a flack and that blew my mind completely. It was like I was hearing some remastered mix of it, but it actually wasn't. It was just the original song, how the artist intended you to hear it. And it's amazing how many songs you've probably heard that you think of like sound rubbish, that the artist thinks, no, I didn't want it to sound like that. That's probably why you get so many remasters these days. And I know it's to do with royalties and things like that as well, but they remix it and everything, don't they? Um, and the funny thing about the White, White Stripes is they've only got two members. They've got like a drummer and Jack White, who basically does everything. It's like his distorted vocals, a simple drum beat from Meg, um, bass line created by playing guitar, and um, but yeah it's so simple but it was so amazing it just sounded sounded like I was sat there in the studio as the producer listening to that song it was really it was crystal clear I was hearing little th things I'd never ever heard before and I've listened to that song um, probably about a thousand times thanks to um, Sky Sports, yeah. But anyway, day two, I got the first out of the way. I thought, wow, this is amazing. Um, I've mastered the perfect fit of getting them in my ears. That's the soft ears, because we are 
actually talking about them. And um, no noise cancellation needed, so it's perfect. I'm going to test some, I actually tested some of my own personal songs at CD quality just to make sure there wasn't anything funny going on with Tidal that day. So I've got the full 24 over 192 kilohertz. Um, and that was fine, so I went back to Tidal. And the next song was Pink Floyd's Echoes, the 2011 remastered version. The, the song and the aspects of the structure of it, highs, mid, lows, not to mention all the other things, it's like a 20 minute song and you can hear like a pin drop if you wanted to. I didn't have it that loud, but, and of course you shouldn't have it that loud because you need to hear. But from what I was hearing, I was thinking, how can this be so different from a, a normal pair of headphones? It was like it went up 20 fold and my hearing had got 10 years younger and I was feeling, well, that V sound wasn't there. I was, I was happy. I, I was like in bliss listening to this. Closed my eyes and I thought I was actually there when it was being recorded. It was mad. Anyway, next song, which I thought would be like a V sound. Uh, and it's one of my favourite groups, Outcast, Rosa Parks. And I was hearing parts that I'd never heard before. And I thought it would just be a typical V sound, heavy on bass hip hop track. But it was nothing like that at all. And I was blown away again. <laughs> How can this keep happening? It's got to be a fluke. I'm going to have to find a bad song sometime. But I gave it another shot and I picked um, Kendrick Lamar's N95, this was perfection. I've never heard music with such clarity before, being mixed perfectly, lyricism. I know earphones aren't really about lyricism, but I'm just trying to paint you a picture of the actual sound. It was, it's like it was dismantled and then put back together better. It was mad. And um, I just I I love Kendrick and hearing his stuff like that and how he wanted to make it was very very special. I'm a huge fan. Anyway, I actually started my high res music uh, experience blown away on a budget of low end audio file equipment like the KZM Pros. But I can't believe I was, like, thinking they were amazing. Well, they're still good, but I thought they were, like, the best. I thought there was some, like, trick and they'd sold £500 headphones for, like, 20 quid. But um, it, these softies blow them out of the water. If you've got a pair of KZM Pros and you, you think you're a bit of an audiophile, you might have a DAC. Well, you definitely need a DAC, actually. Or and an amplifier. These don't actually take much to run, so you can run them just with a DAC, probably if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, I I ripped up my pin of the case lens, and um, the soft ears were now my favourite ever IEM headphone speaker. You name it, because. It felt like you were living in the music. And if you're a huge music fan, you can't actually get much better than that. There's no added bass, there's no poor sounding vocals. The song just sounds amazing, whatever song. And I tried to catch it out with some dodgy songs. Right, I did say we were actually getting another thing as well, and I've just pretty much talked quite a lot about it with the IEMs because without this the IEMs wouldn't sound as good and it's the, of course the uh, Ibasso DX170 there's a box there and then you've got a little inner box on the sleeve magnetised and nicely packaged there 
got a little tab for you to put out. Get to that in a bit. But you've got your normal gubbins of your warranty card and instructions in there. I obviously don't need that. But um, you will. And then you just slide this out. I do like the way they've done that. It makes it seamlessly like able to come out. Yeah, so you've got your DX170 here. Nice big screen. Again, I'll put the um, specs in the video or in the description as there is a lot of them and it would <laughs> this is meant to be a short video and um, I've already waffled on about music too much but there we go um, anyway just take a quick look around it you've got a um, micro SD card slot for expandable storage which is a must because I think this has only got something like 32 gigabytes free which is take away the operating system and it's about 27 gigabytes which is nothing if you're planning on loading flax and lossless files to this it's got a screen protector on it that's why it looks and you can see it's so shiny you can see the trees out the window but they're not cracks don't worry and um anyway looking around it you can see you see right through it it just looks like it's premium and for a mid-range device that is quite rare because I always cut back on things you've even got your USB on top so that doesn't interfere with your two so you get a, a proper good quality um, yeah so looking around it it looks I don't know if you can see that properly but the screen is really nice. I mean, it's 1080p, so it's going to be nice and vivid anyway. And of course, it is Android based, uh, Android 11, I believe. So you could theoretically play games on it, but I personally wouldn't because it, it only has two gigabytes of RAM. And for today's standards and gaming and things like that, it's, it's just best left as a music player. And that's what it is for. I don't get why you'd want to, you've already got a phone, why then get this to add apps on it, it just doesn't make any sense. But yeah, you have um, your 3.5 and your 4.4 balanced output on the bottom. It's all really nicely made. And my favourite part is actually a physical button. I love physical buttons these days, you don't get them on much at all. But this one is for the volume, and then you've got your power on. There we go. Give that a minute to load up. And, um, I mean, I basso do do one that's a bit more expensive um, and has a lot more features, but if you're on a budget, and you want a quality uh, DAP, then you can't go wrong with this, really. I mean, it's got everything you need. Again, specs will be on the page. Right, this is loaded up now. And um, as you can see, you're greeted with an APK Pure logo, which some of you might know what that means. Unfortunately, there is no Google Play Store. A, a big down... A big downside if you're not tech savvy and you can sideload apps because let's face it not everyone can do that and then you've got to find them as well but APKPR is safe and it does come preloaded with all your streaming apps anyway so I wouldn't I've actually not used it at all because I don't need any more apps all you really need is your music app and then flick to your left and then you've got the actual player for stuff you've put on your card and card and onboard storage i mean I, I could be tempted to play a little game sometimes but i just don't have time and i'd rather get immersed in the music i mean do you really want to spend all this money and then be playing a game like it was just on your phone when you could just do that anyway for nothing but i digress Anyway, yeah, 
I'll load up my um, Tidal. Show you the loading times. Oh, wrong one. For a two um, gigabyte, for something that's got two gigabytes of RAM, it's actually quite snappy. So I would advise you not to keep much on it, just your music and your streaming apps. I mean, I've got Apple and Tidal because I like, I just like Apple because you get well, it's accepted in loads of places. You get it on like your Xbox and things like that. And, and Tidal just doesn't come on many things, but the audio is superior. So I've got the best of both worlds. Um, with this, I wouldn't really be bothering with Spotify to play MP3s. Um, it's, it's just not worth it. You might as well just use your phone if you're going to be getting one of these for MP3s. It's um, even got dual core DAX. So this thing can pack a punch. Uh, again, I will post all the specs on on the page or on here so you can see. But I'll just unlock it again. You can see up in the see up in there that will show you. So there's a lot of notifications. But anyway, it does show you it shows you everything Android does basically. We've even got the swipe down menu with the notifications. So it's full Android 10 and uh, Android 11 based, sorry. And um, you don't really need anything else. I mean, I'm a huge Android fan anyway. I know some of their phones, the sound isn't great and you need to buy on the little dongles. But I mean, for a standalone DAP, it's perfect. And it allows you to get the likes of all of these on there. And that means you've got like, what, 60 million songs in your pocket. Well, obviously you've got to download them first because it doesn't have 4G or 5G. 